All right, guys, here we have a 2009 EasyGo RXV gas. Uh, this one here is suffering from something that I've been seeing quite a bit of. And I'm not exactly sure what the hell the problem is here. Um, you can see I've been kind of farting around with it a little bit. I haven't really done much to it yet other than put it up on the ramps, take the seat off, and set the light up. Uh, and I popped off this cover here that covers over the solenoid and voltage regulator and all that stuff in there. What I'm experiencing with a lot of these easy goes, and it, you know, just to be clear, it's not on every single one. It's a sporadic few, and I think it has a lot to do with the light kit. But what's happening is, after the cart sits for a while, there's something draining the battery, and it's killing the battery completely flat dead. And you go to try to start the cart, turn the lights on, nothing works. So we have a parasitic draw on this cart. We gotta figure out what it is. We're gonna test to see if the headlight circuit or the golf cart circuit is the one drawn. The parasitic has the parasitic draw on it. Yeah, see, look at this nuts. Look at this crap. See, this Mickey Mouse nonsense here. Are you freaking serious? That? All right, somebody must have. This, there is no way in hell this could have come from the factory like this. This solenoid has wires cut on it and wire capped and then tied back into the factory harness. There is no way in hell that that can come to, from the factory like that. Look at this. What's this? Somebody. Some weird stuff. Oh, yeah. By the way, it is the middle of uh, May, and it's only in the 40s, and it's cold, and I have the heat on. So here's our voltage regulator. This is the red wire that comes from the switched side of the solenoid here. It comes from the starter generator. Our orange wire comes from... Where's that go? I think that's going back to the taillights. Black wire also is going back to the taillights. It looks like... There's something back on that side, that behind there. I wonder what that is. Okay, so just full disclosure, 100% honesty here, guys. You know, you know, as far as the easy goes go, these newer ones. Okay, I haven't really had any opportunity or any reason really to dive into the electrical system and trace out the wire harness to figure out what goes where and what does what. All right, so this is going to be a little bit of a learning curve for myself and probably you if you haven't done this either. So it'll be. A great trip to take together. We'll see what's going on. But first things first, before we start really diving into too much crap here on the factory harness, we're gonna start at the battery and we're gonna see where we can figure out which circuit is doing its parasitic draw. I don't think you're gonna have to see it. I got my meter here, it's the Harbor Freight gig. I got it set to 20 amps. Positive terminal is in the amp setting, the amp meter setting, and ground is in ground. I don't know, you're not gonna be able to see this where I'm gonna put it, I'll, but I'll show it to you. Just give me a second here. Okay, so let's put this over here. The cart is off. It doesn't look like we have much of a draw here because it's not registering anything. Let's go over to the milliamp section here. We'll go to 200 milliamps. See if it's just that low of a draw that we're not reading it. Eight milliamps. There is a eight milliamp draw on the lights. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, eight point one milliamp draw on the lights on the lighting circuit. So let me turn the parking brake off. Okay. Let's see if I can get this in here to stay.
Yeah, on the lighting circuit, there should be absolutely none. No draw whatsoever. But you can see here, there's an 8 milliamp draw on the lighting circuit. So that's why this battery keeps going dead on this cart. That should be zero. Okay, so there you saw it. Here, just to show you it all, I will show you. I'm going to go to the cart side now. Just going to stab the braided wire and go to our negative terminal on the battery. Zero. That is zero amp milliamps being constantly drawn. So there is something in the lighting circuit that is keeping this battery dead. It's, it continuously is drawing the battery down. See, this is an aftermarket light kit. This is not a uh, this is not, I mean, well, let me rephrase that. This may be an aftermarket light kit, but it is definitely not part of the factory harness because it has its own battery connections here. So that's what tells me that, that it's definitely not, it's not tied into the factory harnesses. Well, actually, you know what, yes it is. Oh wait, no it isn't. No, it's not tied into the factory harness. So it is an aftermarket light kit, for sure. I don't understand this whole bullshit wiring mess here. But if this is how this cart came out of the factory, then shame on you, EasyGo. That's disgusting. How dare you release a product with that messy ass wiring? If it didn't, then ignore what I said. All right, so what's the solution to this? What do we do to keep this battery from being drawn dead every single time? the cart is parked for an extended period. Well, we have a couple of options, and we've decided to go with a waterproof breaker. Okay, so what the customer can do is we're gonna install this breaker right here on this panel, and we're gonna come off the positive side and go into the battery connection, and then come out of this side and connect back to the cart's factory wiring. So when the customer is not using the cart for, let's say, longer than a week, they can hit this button and it will disconnect this breaker, effectively disconnecting the electrical system from the cart. This will also add as an added benefit, or have the added benefit as to being a circuit breaker, a resettable circuit breaker, 200 amp circuit breaker. And because we have lots of room on the inside of this plastic compartment here, we are going to mount it to this plastic compartment. So that way it looks fairly factory. We're gonna mount it exactly right there. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see that. Put it right there. It won't interfere with anything. Run a couple of uh, self-tapping screws. Now, let's see, but there's one in the center and two on the end. So I think what we'll do is we'll install it. The, uh, no, we'll install it this way. So we'll do that before we put this cover back on. But yeah, there's, this is a simple solution to that. It's an effective solution, really. All right, so I got my little impact driver. I got this cover here, and what I'm gonna do to make this easier is I'm going to disconnect the relay. And I'll set this here. So I've decided I wanna keep the battery terminals towards the motor side, so we're going to install this thing basically right here using self tapping screws. And we'll drop them while we're at it, both of them. And I got to reach under the cart. And then there's one here. I personally like self tapping screws, they're so versatile use them for so many different things and then if you get the ones that have the neoprene washers uh, they basically make a weather tight seal more or less now ideally what you could do if you really don't want to go to this extent is to try to find the root cause to what is making the battery drain uh, it could be anywhere in this lighting system. It could be the drivers for the LED lights. 
It's really hard to say for sure without really diving into it. But for now, this is going to be a really nice solution. It's going to serve multiple purposes too. <laughs> For long-term storage, instead of constantly disconnecting the battery and then reconnecting it, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm, I want to take it out of storage quick, all you do is just disconnect the, the breaker and turn it back on. It's a really inexpensive way to do it, uh, but not only that, it does add a little bit of security to your cart. Uh, and I mean security as in the battery isn't going to run itself flat constantly. Okay, so what we need to do is... We're going to leave that wire connected to the solenoid. And we are going to actually, and we're going to run all the wires off of that. I'm going to put that little Christmas tree thing back in there. So the one thing you will have to add is you will need to put in a second jumper wire to go from the battery to the breaker or from the breaker to the solenoid. So whichever wire you disconnect, you still have to replace it with something. All right, so I got a small length of spare wire that I have. Battery negative is already disconnected because we were testing with it, so we don't need it hooked up yet. I'm gonna take off the positive battery terminal. Take off the positive light. Now this is the cable that's coming from the solenoid. So what we're going to do is we're going to route it down and under. Let's see, these are very large studs. I might have to re-terminate this wire as well. Take this stud wire off. Yeah, that's not going to fit on there. So we'll have to re-terminate the end of this wire as well, which is not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. I don't mind that. Take this stud off. Okay. Okay, so now I can cut this off and I will cut this off. I know you may be thinking this is probably a very extreme route to go. There could be something inside the electrical system that we're not seeing that is causing all of this hoopla. So I got some 6 gauge 3 8 ring terminals here. So they fit on the 3 8 stud. And we're going to crimp these. So first we're going to do this wire here. I strip my wires back with a knife. So I strip it back just enough so I can get the ring terminal on. These are six gauge wire. I'm going to put it in my crimper and crimp it down nice and tight. And I know somebody's going to ask. Where did you get that crimper from? This is an anchor cr crimper. This one here, it'll do multiple different size wires. I got this from dellcity.net. That's where I get most of my electrical stuff. All right, so while we're here, we're gonna take battery positive and the light kit positive. I'm going to reinstall them onto the battery's positive terminal. Nothing to really worry about with this because the negative cart wire is disconnected at the moment. Oh, you guys surprised I'm not using the electric ratchet? Okay, a positive is hooked up. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And now I'm gonna to go to the battery side on the breaker. Now I gotta strip this one back. 
which this is the factory wire that goes to the, from the battery, originally from the battery to the solenoid. That one's stripped back really easily. A little bit extra on that one. And 200 amps is plenty. Uh, the starter generator, when cranking, shouldn't draw any more than like maybe 100, 150 amps. Okay. All right, there we go, that's tight. go that's tight I'm gonna disconnect the breaker just for good measure so when I hook up the battery negative it's not loaded up I still have to reinstall the little Christmas tree plug that goes in there uh, but I want to hook up the battery negative now the cart negative And the light kit negative. So again, technically, I just realized I made an oops. I hooked the light kit to the positive. I didn't hook it up after the breaker. So we got to straighten that out. So we'll take the positive wire for the light kit and we are going to install it on the solenoid side of the breaker. You could, in all reality, you could kind of, if you wanted to, you could hook it up to the constant power side on the solenoid if you really wanted to on the large terminal, not on the switched side. You don't want to ever hook any other electrical circuit to the switched side or the, um, the small gauge wires on the solenoid ever, 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 ever. Okay, so technically right now the cart is connected. Disconnected. Connected. So now if I keep it disconnected, I'll turn the lights on. They don't work. I flick the breaker. The lights do turn on. Turn the breaker off. Lights off. Turn the cart on. Nothing from the solenoid. I am going to straighten these wires out so they're not touching the exhaust. Turn this on. See how it runs. And now if I disconnect it, we get nothing. So there we go. That is basically how to install a breaker or a kill switch on your cart, more or less. And it's a weatherproof unit, so it's not gonna be affected much by any weather that may get under here, because sometimes you get some moisture and everything under there and it gets a bit shitty. I'm gonna throw I hate, I hate how shitty this cable management is. I'm a big proponent of making sure when you install cable works, like for electrical systems like this, that they actually look good at the same time of functioning properly. Anybody that just throws this crap together just to do it without any care is not okay in my book. So I can't, without completely ripping out the entire electrical and doing it over, this is the best it's going to get. Just a couple of zip ties just to make it look good. you got to mostly keep the wiring away from the exhaust. You don't want it to touch. So yeah, I got this meter up at Harbor Freight. Send Tech 61593. Okay, so here's a close-up. You can see how this works. Press the button disconnects the cart from the electrical system or the battery connect it it turns the battery on so the cart is hooked up again it also works like a, a crude electrical tow run switch if you will 
or a tow maintenance switch. So when you're disconnecting the batteries, if there is any load on the system, you don't really have to worry about anything arcing because this will effectively disconnect everything from the battery. It's 200 amp breaker, ignition protected. It is weatherproof. It is a little bit dirty now because of the, the dust underneath the cart. I know some people are going to say, why don't you put shrink wrap on the wire terminals? You know what? I think I might just do that. Okay, so just a few moments later and both ends now have shrink wrap on them, heat shrink. This has green just because it's what was left over and this has blue just because it's what I grabbed. There's no significance in the color. For this application, I didn't have a large enough one in red, so I grabbed the next size that would fit over the end without having to re-terminate. So, all right guys, that is it for this one. This cart is now protected. These things are kind of stupid and terrible, but you know, they came with it. So, all right guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. This one's done, it's in and out real fast. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Hit the bell icon next to subscribe to be notified anytime I upload a new video to the channel. Be sure to check the video's description for links to products I use every single day to bring you these videos and run my business. And as always, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.